What's going on guys? My name is Tyler Potts and this is the Muddy Wolf channel. Now, we have an update from Bastion. It came out yesterday, 6th of March 2025, on the state of the Go Godot XR update, February 2025. Um, I've been away for a while. I've been busy. I've been doing other things. Uh, but I am back and we're going to get back into Godot. But before we do that, I want to review what's changed and what's happening in this latest release. So Godot 4.4 has been released. Uh, I have taken a look at this. It looks pretty cool. Uh, but from a, from a VR perspective, there's not much on here. There is a really cool you can make games inside of VR now which is pretty cool uh, I've seen I saw something like this on uh, uh, Twitter or X now uh, not long ago so yeah that's pretty cool I love the new um, the new uh, tone mapper um, and this also looks really there's a lot of really cool things that are in this however this isn't the video we are going for today so if you want to check this out the release is here at godoengine.org for some releases 4.4 today we're going to be focusing on what Bastion released yesterday uh, which is the Godot XR update um, and they are announcing the meta toolkit extension so this is going to allow us to basically uh, combine the uh, Meta's platform SDK directly into Godot without having to do all the fluff. There's going to be loads of nice features most likely on top of Godot to help blend them in so you don't have to do all the manual work yourself. Uh, so it says here, we are pleased to announce the release of Godot Meta Toolkit, a GD extension plugin that exposes Meta's platform SDK and provides other tools to simplify and accelerate XR development on Meta's platform. Perfect, that's exactly what we are looking for. Uh, now this is being maintained by W4 Games with a sponsorship from Meta, which is really nice. Thank you Meta for supporting Godot. Um, and yeah, this is pretty cool. So the platform SDK uh, provides us user profiles, uh, including authentication and check on time. And that's great because that's stuff I would love to do in the future is some authentication of logging into games. You can take your games elsewhere. Pretty cool. Uh, In-app purchases. Um, so, you know, being able to actually use that in-app purchase. So you can make money and monetize your game. Uh, downloadable content, DLC, which is lovely. We all love a bit of DLC. Uh, and then friends, pies, and group presence. Again, super useful. If you've got a friend, you want to invite them. You don't have to go out of the game to do it. You can do it within the game through the platform SDK. Super useful, really nice. Achievements, leaderboards, and much more, um, which sounds really good. To be fair, this, it sounds really cool, um, and this is something I'm looking forward to, uh, especially when developing for Meta uh, specifically. This is going to be more the stuff which I develop when I'm using pass-through and stuff like that as well. Uh, it's definitely going to be helpful for when we want to make profit and money from our um, our platforms, our games we post to uh, the XR Meta's platform. Um, anyway, the next thing is setup tool for XR Simulator. That's really nice. The Meta XR Simulator is the counterpart of the Godot XR Editor, as it allows developers to test XR applications directly on their computer without removing the head. The he you know, the worst part, the worst part about VR development is putting the headset on and off and on and off over and over again. So this is actually amazing this is great news i love this that it's there uh i think there was some alternative in the past some extensions i used um but it just it, i don't think it was that well integrated so this hopefully looks a lot more integrated and it's literally gonna make me a happy boy that's really cool yeah so love that that's awesome um oh i just clicked on the image um yeah that's pretty cool i'm excited for that that's something i'll probably show off in the future if you guys want to see it let me know if you want to demo on anything here i will go through it learn it and demo it for you and the video to make it easier for you guys to learn just let me know down below in the comments uh Easily configure exports for MetaQuest headsets. When exporting your game for a MetaQuest headset in particular, if you want to release on Horizon OS store, uh, there are a number of specific required export settings. The Godot Meta Toolkit provides a new export option that if checked will automatically configure these settings to their required values. Again, that is super awesome. Um, that's just really cool. That's one of the worst things is going through, exporting it, uploading it, and realizing you've missed check and sank and not had it all done. So having it in one place is extremely cool and makes me very happy. If it configures it automatically, that's a bonus. It speeds us up. All right, we've got the OpenXR Fenders plugin 3.1.2 release. Um, release after Godot XR Fenders plugin with plenty of features and bug fixes. Oh. Uh, for go 4.3, 
uh, and later only. You can download version 3.1.2 from the GitHub or the Asset Library. Uh, nice, perfect. So more stuff for the OpenXR Fenders. Great. So update OpenXR to Kronos uh, 1.141 41 release. Uh, add the option to enable hand tracking on Pico devices. That's cool. So Pico is something I wanted to get into in the future. Haven't done it yet. Haven't bought one yet. I really want to. Just got other things I need to get and sort first. Uh, but that's something I'd love to do videos on in the future. It's Pico. So if you want to look, see more about Pico as well, just let me know down below in the comments. Uh, super cool. I love that. Add support for toggling the hand tracking frequency on Pico devices between low and high. Again, another cool feature. Add the OpenXR extension automatically request runtime permissions, project settings to enable, disable, automatic requests for runtime permissions. Okay, yeah, that's awesome, because then you don't have to constantly do that yourself. Again, another feature that just makes it easier for us. That's These are the features I love the most. Add export profile for the Magic Leap 2 devices. I've not heard of this much, but if there's something people are interested in, comment down below. I'll look into it. Maybe I'll get a device and we can do some testing. It sounds pretty cool. Um, lovely bug fixes. Uh, we we love a good bug fix. We don't need to see them. We can read them here. But yeah, bug fixes. Awesome news. Uh, I haven't really experienced many bugs, or if I have, I've not noticed. So yeah, cool. Good old XR Tools 4.40 release. Now we have a uh, video here from Bastion. Definitely go check this out. Uh, Good old XR Tools improved hand physics. That sounds cool. Uh, and I'm going to look at that video after this. I think that's going to be pretty cool. Um, so updated to contain 4.2 mesh formats and thus requiring 4.2 plus. Um, lovely features. The start. The start XR startup script has had a cleanup pass it now properly handles the pass through system changes in godot 4.3 and godot 4.3 saw changes in basing through uh pass through on the environment's blend mode and moved the logic into the fender plugin to improve platform support through for pass through xr tools now makes us makes use of this new system that's good to know moving forward i love that fixing nab and proper support for the immersive ar and immersive vr web xr modes now this is something i want a lot of my clients so i i'm a freelancer was free uh, was a freelancer i'm now building my own digital agency uh but something we offer is xr and vr stuff now usually if they want it on the web-based platform i need to make it through web xr uh, and not use Godot because otherwise it's a bit more of a hassle but I love seeing support for that come in because that means that's going to save me a lot of time and allows me to probably create some more complex um, apps on the web as well. Provide signals to notify when the user enters or exits VR. That's also really useful because I think in the past when you just took it off it didn't really do anything and knowing when they take it off could help you pause the game and stuff like that. That's super cool. I love that. Uh, pickable objects now include an action released signals so additional logic can be written when objects are dropped by the user i did not know they didn't have that again it's something that's super useful it should be in it so when you drop it tells you it's now been dropped lovely that's a good that's a good act, uh, signal to have allow grab points and poses to work with different types of hand trackers that's good we do love grab points being working and more universal the fin the Fignette shader now works properly in Godot 4, including support for reverse C depth buffers. That's good to know because sometimes you just need that Fignette, especially when you're to help motion sickness. I think that's really good and obviously supporting that is great. Uh, added visibility change. Notifications to viewport 2D and 3D hosted scenes. Lovely. That's good to know. Uh, add snap path, a new snap object that allows you to snap objects along a path at a fixed intervals that's amazing that is something you could use like as, especially for game physics you know like just moving stuff in some ways let's say you need to move something across a rail you would have to i've done it before actually i did a um a uh, you grip it and you had to slide across a um sip wire so i had a sip wire thing you hooked on and i had to manually code it to follow its said axis straight along the wire whereas now if you can do that that's great that's really cool i like that well done uh, and bug fixes fix custom hand poses calling legacy remove animation uh, invisible viewport now disabled physics and viewport updates perfect because that's something i had when you made the viewport 2d invisible uh obviously i was still able to hit it and i won't i didn't realize why my um raycast wasn't hitting a certain object behind it 
but it's because it was in the way and I had to manually disable that. Now it does it automatically, I assume. I assume that's what that means. That's great. It runs collision hands, so collision shapes of picked up objects are now added and we no longer have hands collide with dropped objects. Good. So this this is the update from Bastion. Uh, that's that's what's coming. Godot uh, XR. This is this is the really cool. There's some really good news. To be fair, some really cool features in there. Uh, let me know what you're most excited for and what you're planning to do with some of this. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I think my favourite one is the Meta Toolkit because at the minute Meta is the main platform I would develop games for. Um, as well as to be fair a lot of these little fixes and small details are really going to help speed the development so let me know what you guys want to see in the future uh, let me know what sort of tutorials you guys want to see from Godot 4.4 uh, I plan to get back into creating more tutorials uh, more regularly so let me know what you want to see and I will actually do that for you so guys thank you for tuning in this video don't forget to leave us for that don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and if you want to support the channel, you can by heading over to Patreon. Not only will you be supporting me and me creating videos, you'll also be able to get access to source code for future videos as well, uh, and past videos. So if you want the source code so you don't have to rewrite it all out yourself, you can go get that. The uh, It's all on the Patreon, the links are all down below. But anyway, thank you for tuning into this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.